Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we're taking a look at the new releases from Lisa Eldridge. She released five eyeshadow palettes. I picked up three of the five and then she also released new velvet lipsticks and lip pencils along with a few new eye brushes. So I did not pick up any of the lipsticks. I have had issues with breakage so I decided you know a better way to get the colors that I want is to go with the lip pencils. So I picked up a couple of the lip pencils in two of the new shades, Duchess and Sorcery, and three of the eyeshadow palettes. Now in the past, I had purchased all of the Lisa Eldridge Velvet lipsticks, so I will leave a video linked down below with swatches of all of the lipsticks that I do have from her. So if you're shopping for something in particular, a particular shade, this might be helpful. And if you are interested in her makeup brushes, I don't have any of those, but they are a synthetic food aid brush. So they're definitely going to be a high quality brush. And let's go ahead and take a look at what I did pick up. The eyeshadows come in a white cardboard box. You do have a cardboard insert here to help keep it protected. And then we have kind of this lightweight, it's that plastic that feels a little metallic. Um, you have this lightweight palette. There is a mirror in here. And it does come with one of those heavy duty plastic, you know, covers to go over this to help prevent the eyeshadow from getting on the mirror. This is not quite as thick as the ones that come on the clay to Poe items, but it is going to be thicker than your average plastic covering there. Now looking at this, this is the palette Sorcery. Right now on the US site, this is the only palette that is sold out. The other palettes are currently all still available. This one is my favorite. This palette here is Vega. You can see this is gonna be more of those cooler neutral tones. And then the last one that I picked up is Myth. Now Lisa Eldridge does have a video going over all of these palettes and she has some demos and things. So it's definitely a great resource. I'll leave her video linked down below in the description box. Let's start off on swatching these. So we're gonna start off with Myth. And we do have six different finishes in the Lisa Eldridge formula. We'll talk a little bit about those uh, formulas and the differences while we are doing the eye demos. But first, let's start off with the swatches. So our first shade here, and by the way, all of these Lisa Eldridge shades are available as refills as well. Unfortunately, she does not sell the actual eyeshadow palette, the actual case separately. So the refills, the purpose is if you would like to replace a shade and make the palette a little bit more customizable, you can do that, but you do have to kind of purchase a palette already or you, they are magnetic, so you could use you know an empty palette that you already have. You just won't get the beautiful Lisa Eldridge packaging. And it is really nice. You can see you've got kind of the ribbed lines on the top, smooth here, the Lisa Eldridge logo. And yeah, so that's kind of a shame. I hope in the future they will sell the palettes separately as well so that you can truly customize your own palette. So this is the palette myth. And I think this is a really pretty palette, but I have to say this is the least favorite of mine out of the ones that I picked up. So starting off, we're looking at Noctorama, which is a velvet. And you can see this is kind of like a mauve eggplant kind of shade. There's a little bit of a deep purple base, but there's really a touch of mauve, a touch of gray in there, and it's gonna be really dusty. So it's a little bit more of a neutral shade. This is going to be the velvet formula, which is one of the mattes. Then we have Illusionism, which is a top coat. And you can see this one is going to have a transparent base and you have a little bit of shimmer here. It is supposed to be multicolored shimmer. It looks mostly to be a pink shimmer. And next up we have Mauve Decade, which is going to be a velvet. And this is really going to be more of a mauve taupe. And then Faded Amethyst is a metallic. And look at that. This has such an interesting formula. It's kind of similar to the new Guerlain quads where you've got kind of that smoothness, but it grips onto things. And then next up, we have two more velvets. We have Victorian trim and Violet Stone. So these are both going to be, you know, you can see even on the Violet Stone here, we kind of have that fuchsia base. These two shades, um, you know, I, I don't really get eye irritation from them per se but I do get a little bit of staining on my lids from them, even with a, a base. So just something to know, if you do have sensitivity to pigments like that, those two shades might cause an issue for you. Now, moving on to Vega, 
Next up, let's take a look at Vega. And this is one of my favorites. It's a really beautiful, beautiful, you know, soft neutral palette that leans cool. So we're starting off here with a velvet shade called French Gray. And you can see that's going to be more of a grayish taupe followed by smoke and mirrors. This is gonna be a seamless matte. You can see that's really more of a French blue kind of color. You've got a little bit of that slate gray mixed with blue, and then kind of like a Wedgwood blue. Then next up, we have a metallic in Moon Swirl, and you can see that this is kind of like a fawn gray with a touch, of, or fawn brown with a touch of gray in there. And then next up, we have Turbulence, which is a seamless matte. I have to say, I really like this seamless matte. It's one of those creamy mattes, and you can see when you're using a brush with it, you can see it get really creamy on there. Then next up, we have Supernova, which is a luminous shade. So you can see the difference between those with the metallic. This is gonna have a more sheer base. And then last up here, we have Lamp Black, which is another seamless matte, very smooth and creamy. This here is Sorcery. This is my favorite palette. We're going to go ahead and swatch this one on my other arm. And, you know, I think this is gorgeous. Now, one thing to note, the palette weights, they do differ slightly depending on, you know, the shadows and the, the actual formulas in there because different formulas do have slightly different weights. So Sorcery is 5.4 grams whereas both Vega and Myth are 5.7 grams. So this here's our top row. This first shade here is Troubadour, which is seamless matte. You can see it's actually a really deep emerald green with a touch of teal. Let me just go ahead and put a little bit more of that on there so you can see that color better. Look at that, so pretty. Next up, we have Grotto, which is a metallic. And again, we've got a little bit of a, you can see a little gray there in the edges. Okay, in the base there, but you again, you've got kind of that green and that teal. And then we have more of this chartreuse shade. So we've got kind of this olive khaki green. This one here is called Magical and it's a metallic. So you've got kind of that olive khaki green with a little bit of like an antique gold shimmer on top of that. Next up, this is my favorite shade. And this is the majority of what's on my lid right now. This one here is called Mercurial. This is a luminous shade. So out of all, um, I, I just think this is the best shade <laughs> overall in all of these palettes. But look at that, you can see there's a little bit of a color shift. You've got a little gold, a little green, a little blue. It's really a very beautiful shade. Next up we have Mage, which is a metallic. And this is gonna be a bit more of a steel gray, but you do have a slight green tint to that. And then last up we have Swan Song which is a metallic, and this is a deep blue, more like that night sky kind of look. It's so pretty. And that's Sorcery. So if we're looking at all of these, we've got Myth, Vega, Sorcery. So we're gonna go ahead and look at some eye demos. This is just me kind of playing around with the shadows to kind of see what the colors look like on the lids. So I'm not actually wearing other makeup during this. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the different finishes first. So there are six different finishes. We have the seamless mattes. Those are gonna be your soft mattes with a touch of luminosity. So they're not gonna be a flat matte, not quite a satin matte either, but there's a little bit of luminosity. Now, the seamless mattes in here, you know, I really like these seamless mattes. They feel very creamy to go on, but they have a little bit of a grip to the lid. So you can definitely feel either swatching it or whatever, you can feel that grip, that resistance going on. Because of that, you know, if you want a soft wash of color, definitely go ahead and you can use a fluffy brush with this. You're just not gonna get a ton of pigment. You're gonna kind of have to blend that out more, but you'll get a very, very soft wash of color. If you wanna pile on more color, you definitely either wanna pat the color on with a more dense brush or use your finger. And you know, I think that formula itself is kind of similar to those in the newest Guerlain quads because those also have kind of that grip to them. So I, I think you know it's a really great formula. I really like that one. The velvets are gonna be your creamy matte powder paints. So these are gonna have some grip as well to them, but I feel like the seamless mattes, I feel a little bit more of that grippy texture with those than I do with the velvets. The velvets feel very creamy to the point where almost like a creamy powder. Um, like, like what, 
I kind of said that wrong, but yes, a creamy powder like we're used to with some creamy powder eyeshadows, but it's more like if you get a ton of that product up, it turns, you know, like the excess is more powdery, if that makes sense. So it's a creamy matte powder paint. And I just feel like it's a really nice formula. There's not a huge difference between the velvets and the seamless mattes texturally, but there is a little bit. I do feel like the seamless mattes just have a little bit more of a silky texture than the velvets. And you know, the velvets really do have more of that plushness to it, like you would expect from a velvet formula. So almost like it's not as densely packed and there's a little bit more air in that formula. Now the luminous shades, those are described as having a medium payoff with a semi-transparent base that gives a light veil of color. And I have to say two of my favorite shades here in this luminous formula, you know, we've got the Mercurial, which is my number one favorite shade in the Sorcery palette. That is the bottom left of the Sorcery palette. And then the, the luminous shade in Vega is the Supernova, which is the second to last shade. And I have to say, I think I just absolutely love the colors. I love the formula of these and they go on very nicely. There is some fallout with all of these sparkly shades, even when you kind of tap it on, but you know, it's nothing bothersome. It's easy to clean up. Next up, we also have the metallic shades. These are gonna be a rich, even smooth shadow with dense metallic pearls. And the pearls are all supposed to be about the, about the same size in that particular shade. And I think it's a really nice metallic. These are not gonna be as strongly metallic as something like a Pat McGrath shadow or Danessa Myricks, where you've got a lot more of that richness and vibrancy of color. These are gonna be a bit more of a subtle metallic and the formula itself is a little bit thicker than those as well. So this is more like the velvet in texture, but with a metallic finish. So again, it's a little bit airier and creamy. Next up, we have a luster finish, and I actually don't have any of those, so the luster finish is not in any of the three pals I picked up, but this is going to be a densely packed pearly finish, so you've got a ton of very small micro pearl uh, particles in there that are densely packed to give you kind of this pearly look on your lid, and I'm sure it's very beautiful, uh, and I would love to try that at some point. And then the last shade is a top coat. And I only have one of these and that is the light sparkly shade in Myth. It's the second shade, it's called Illusionism. And your top coats are multicolored, subtly sparkling pearls on a transparent base. So, I mean, it's essentially just your topper and the shade that I particularly have in Myth is going to be kind of like your sheer pink sparkles. So it's really not something that you're going to wear without another product, but it goes on very nicely with others. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I should have mentioned this with the luminous shades. The luminous shades, you can kind of use those as a topper as well. So if you take a brush and you put a little bit on and you just softly dab it on the eyes, you're going to get that topper effect as well because again, we have a semi-transparent base there. So, you know, it's not gonna be quite the same effect as a topper, but very close. So if you just use a little bit of that product, you can get that topper effect. And I, again, I think that's probably my favorite formula, one of my favorite colors here. Overall, all of these palettes, I think these are really nice palettes. These are made in Italy. And as I mentioned, they do have you know varying weights depending on which particular shadows are in there because different formulas are gonna have slightly different densities. You still have the same volume of product in each package. So each palette has six shades. Sorcery's 5.4 grams, Vega and Myth are both 5.7 grams. And again, you can switch out the shades if you are interested in doing that. Or if you are somebody who loves a palette and you use up a shade, it's a great way to be able to replace one without having to buy a whole new palette. Because I can already tell you this uh, Mercurial shade, I would not be surprised if I hit pan on it, even with my collection of eyeshadows. So really, really like that one. So while we're finishing up these demos, I just wanna give you some thoughts on the individual palettes. 
So Myth, as I mentioned earlier, is my least favorite of these. And for me, the biggest reason is because those last two shades, Victorian Trim and Violet Stone, they're both kind of more, they have kind of that fuchsia base. So when I use them, that's kind of what I see more of. And again, those can be a little irritating to some, I, I think, because they do stain my lids a little bit. And, um, you know, so those two, they work well with a color story, but they are similar enough for me on the eye that I don't need both of those. Then the other two shades that are kind of similar to me would be the Faded Amethyst Metallic, which is the bottom left in the second row, and the uh, top right in the first row, Mauve Decade, which is a velvet. So there are differences in color, but when I put them on the eye, especially if I put them on next to each other, you know, they look very, very similar. I mean, obviously you do have a different finish, but the tones look very similar to each other. So I feel like there's just not quite enough variation. It's nice having a topper in there. And then I like the Nocturama Velvet shade in here as well. Kind of that, you know, deeper purple shade. I'm glad it's not a black. It looks almost black in the pan, but it's definitely not. And I think that goes really well. So overall, I do like the colors in this palette. But for me, I would appreciate just a little more variation. And again, that's why she's got the refills that we can switch out. But one thing I'd like to note about the refills is each refill is 16 US dollars. The palette is 68 US dollars. So that includes the actual packaging component plus the six shades. So if you were to actually add that up and build your own palette, it's significantly more expensive. So it's really kind of cost prohibitive to build your own palette versus purchasing one of the others and trading out a couple shades. Now, Vega is definitely a favorite palette of mine. This is just a great neutral palette. You know, I know everybody's got a ton of neutral palettes. You might already have these colors, you know, in your collection. You probably do, but do you have them all in one palette? Because, you know, I, I saw this palette and it made me think of certain palettes that I have. But then when I actually got up close and looked at them, you know, I don't really have all of these shades in one palette. And I think, you know, if you take out that that blue, the smoke and mirror shade in the middle of the top row, that shade really kind of adds something more to this palette. It also helps lean things a little bit more cool. I think it's a gorgeous shade and it's a great addition. I'm really happy that's in there. But I think if you take that shade out and you're just looking at the other shades, you'll see a lot more similarities in your collection. So I do have similar shades, but I still love this palette and I love having the inclusion of that bluish gray shade in there. And it's just, you know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful palette. So is it necessary? No, but I think it's a really great one and I'm happy to have it. I know it's one that I'll be using a lot, but as I mentioned before, Sorcery is my favorite. And you know, you look at it and you might be a little bit intimidated because the colors are, they look really deep. You've got that first shade that looks black, but it's really a deep green. You have that also, that last shade there is that deep blue. And then you've got kind of these more vibrant looking shades, but you can put these on more sheerly. Again, you've got the metallics and luminous shades in here that can be really softened out if you'd like. And this is a palette that can go more subtle or more dramatic. And I just think it's a really versatile. This is definitely the most unique of the three. And I think it is definitely one worth getting. So if you are interested in the, the color story of sorcery, I would hands down recommend this one. I think it is gorgeous and I really like the formulas. And again, if you're looking just for that one shade that I love, the uh, bottom, the first shade in the bottom row, that is going to be the luminous formula in the shade Mercurial. Absolutely gorgeous, totally worth getting the refill shade of that. All right, so let's take a look at these palettes with some comparisons here. And we're gonna do our comparison swatches a little bit differently today. So let me know what you think of this format. We're gonna start off with the Vega comparisons. And we're first looking at the Tom Ford Violet Satiné. And I think this is one of my favorite quads that have come out this year. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see here, I put the very last shade at the top with the first shade in Myth. And you can see that the actual, um, you know, the top
topper, the top coat in Lisa Eldridge is gonna be a lot more sheer than this lightest shade in the Tom Ford palette. The Tom Ford is more frosty. It's probably similar to the luster finish from Lisa Eldridge. And then you can see that, you know, the Tom Ford, we do have that last shade swatch there. It's gonna be kind of like this mauvey berry kind of shade. It's gonna be a little bit more red, a little bit more mauve than any of the shades in the Lisa Eldridge but you can see that there are some similarities in that color story. So moving on to the next comparison, we have the uh, Viseart. This is the uh, Violette palette, and I love this palette. I think it is gorgeous, but a lot of these shades are not gonna match up. What does match up pretty well would be the very first shade in Myth, that matte. You know, the one in the Violette palette is going to be just a little bit more purple, and then the, uh, you know, the in the Myth palette, the last shade in the top row, that third swatch there, you can see that's gonna be a little bit softer, a little bit more mauve than the Viseart palette. And then our shimmers, you know, you can see they're gonna be a bit more vibrant. Overall, the Violette palette from Viseart is gonna be a more vibrant palette, but we do, again, have some of the same types of color stories. And you can see that the bright pink that they have in the Viseart is actually a duochrome. So it's kind of that bright pink with a touch of like a purple and blue shimmer in there. So you'll see a little bit of a color shift with that one. Next up, we are looking at the Dior palette in Plum Tool. And this, you know, kind of looks like a more muted version of Myth. So we do have a little bit more of a blue purple. That center shade is the first one that is swatched here. In this example, you can see that instead of the topper, we're gonna have kind of this white shade that's, you know, it, it's pretty, it's not even what I would consider a luster. It's almost like a, a whiter metallic shade there. And, you know, our finishes are gonna be a little bit different, but that third shade there, that taupe, that is kind of similar to the one in Plum Tool there, but it is just going to be, so that's the bottom left of Plum Tool, you can see that the finish is different, but the colors are fairly similar. And I feel like that deep matte is, a, it's definitely more burgundy than either of the shades swatched in the Myth palette. But when you're looking at them in the pan, it looks almost like it's an in-between shade between those two shades. So let's move on to the Vega palette. And the first time I saw the Vega palette, the first thing it reminded me of was the Guerlain Imperial Moon Quad. So I wanted to swatch it with that. And we definitely have some similarities. We both have, they both have a matte black. As I mentioned, the formulas on those are pretty similar. And then if we're starting from the bottom of the swatches, you know, the Guerlain, we do have a bit more of a pewtery silver shade. And then the next shade is definitely gonna be more peach than anything in Vega. And then again, we're gonna, that next shade, that first shade there, that's gonna lean a little bit. It's more of a taupey silver, but it's gonna be a bit more silvery than those in Vega. So similar color story, but not dupes. And then we are also looking at this Clay de Peau palette. And this is one of my favorite Clay de Peau palettes. And I think it is stunning, but you can see that the colors here, you know, we have a similar color story, but the colors themselves don't match up. So that first, that light pink shade is gonna be a soft pink metallic, doesn't really match up with anything there. And then we have kind of a brighter silver shade. We have more of this mauve berry, and I think that's really beautiful, and it fits very well with the Vega theme, but it doesn't actually match anything in there. And then the blacks, you can see there is a difference in the blacks. The Clay de Peau black is gonna be a little bit cooler. And the one in the Lisa Eldridge is more of a neutral, like true black, whereas the Clay de Peau is just gonna run a little bit cooler. There's a little bit more like of a purpley gray tone to it. And next I want to take a look at the Chantecaille duo. This is in Tibet. And these two shades in Tibet, I think match up really well with the middle shades. Well, the, the middle shades here on my arm, but it's the last shade in the top row and the first shade in the bottom row. You know, you can see that the finish is gonna be different for that, um, 
the shade Turbulence, which is a seamless matte, but we do have a very similar metallic finish in Moon Swirl, and you can see that the colors are pretty similar. So I think those are pretty good indication. If you have that palette, you can kind of get an idea of what you're gonna see in Vega. And then moving on, we also have the NARS Climax palette. So I first looked at the NARS Climax, and I was thinking, oh, this might compare well to Sorcery, but it actually doesn't. The colors in there really don't look anything like Sorcery. They're much more muted, very different vibe overall. Yet some of these neutral shades here do have a similar vibe to Vega. So if you're interested in a more muted, dustier version of Sorcery and Vega, the NARS Climax palette kind of does offer that for you, but we're looking actually more at more similarities with Vega than Sorcery. So you can see here that the matte shade, you know, it definitely doesn't really match up. It's definitely the, the matte shade in the Climax palette is gonna be more of that khaki color. And our shades aren't really dupes per se, but they're slightly similar in tone and they're more vibrant in the Climax palette. So it'll give you a general idea of the palette. Moving on to the Sorcery palette, we have the Guerlain Mystic Peacock palette. And I only swatched the blue and the green here, but you can see that they're gonna be pretty similar. The blue in the Mystic Peacock is more of a matte shade, whereas we're looking actually at a soft metallic in the Sorcery palette. And you can see that that green in Mystic Peacock is kind of actually a mix of the first three shades in Sorcery. If you were to mix those all together, it's actually mostly a mix of the first two, but with a very faint touch of the magical chartreuse shade there as well. So you have kind of like this gray, this brownish gray base, and then you have this teal and emerald kind of mixed in there mostly. So I do think that that is going to give you a, kind of a similar look as well. Next, we're looking at this Byredo palette. And, you know, I think this is a gorgeous palette. It is a little bit harder to wear because you have so many bright colors in here. But I want to take a look at the blue and the green. You can see that these are going to be uh, like more rich, more metallic versions of what's in Sorcery. So Sorcery is going to be a little bit softer and more muted in comparison to those two shades. These are the Byredo slightly more vibrant. And yeah, it's just stunning. Then I wanted to take a look at the Dior Denim Palette. Because this Denim Palette, while it looks very blue, actually some of these shades do swatch a little bit more on the teal side. So I did swatch all of the shades for Denim, kind of where I thought they were closest. You can see that overall the palette, the Dior palette is going to lean more blue than Sorcery, but we do have some of the same tones. You know, those first two shades that are swatched there have a bit more of a teal look there. And then at the bottom where I swatched the brighter blue and the deep blue, if you were to mix those, you're going to get kind of a similar shade to the deep metallic blue in uh, Sorcery. So I think that's a good approximation. And then last up, we have the Dior Nightbird palette. This was limited edition, it was hard to get, but I did wanna compare this, definitely that peach, that gold, they don't really match in there, but if you look at the other shades in there, you can see that they really match up well with the first three shades in Sorcery. They are, I mean, those are definitely my closest dupes. And now I know there's definitely a reason why I <laughs> gravitate towards both of those palettes. I really love those particular colors. And you can see here that the formulas are fairly similar with the metallics here. The finishes are gonna look very similar to each other. So overall, if you miss out on that palette, Sorcery might be a great, you know, kind of addition. And if you wanted to dupe the Nightbird palette, you know, I think getting those first three shades from the Sorcery palette and then, you know, they she has a couple warmer palettes, you could probably find a peach there and that soft gold. I think it's something you could recreate. So I hope these comparisons were helpful, but please let me know if you prefer this or the live swatches that we typically do. So uh, definitely looking forward to your feedback down below in the comments. So I hope that was helpful. Overall, my thoughts on the palettes are that I think they are really nice. They're a great luxury beauty palette. So these are definitely not going to be, they're not really a mid-range palette. They're not really a low-end palette. They're definitely gonna be high-end luxury price realm. 
And I think the closest in comparison formula wise would be the Guerlain formulas, maybe even some of the Byredo formulas. But when we're looking at those other luxury brands, look at Tom Ford, $90 for a four pan palette. We have things like the new Guerlain, what are they like 86, $88? You know, these are all going to be items that are more expensive with similar quality. So, you know, I have heard some people you know, kind of say they were surprised how expensive these palettes are. Actually having seen them, using them, and feeling the quality of them and how they compare to other luxury beauty items in the industry, I think that they're actually priced very fairly. So let's take a look at the two lip pencil that I picked up. And I, you know, these colors, I, I could not resist. So I love Lisa Eldridge's reds. And this is the shade Duchess. And look at this red and you can see you've got kind of that pink base. Her lip pencils are very, very creamy. You can see I went over that there to get that a little bit brighter, but you kind of have this really beautiful pink based red with a slight touch of burgundy in there, like a faint burgundy, nothing like really deep, but it really balances it out. And this is a color that I think is gonna work well for a lot of people. So I think it's a really beautiful red. And then I also picked up Sorcerer, which is on my lips right now. And I mean, look how creamy that is. Now this is on some people, people with warmer skin tones, you're gonna see a bit of mauve in here. You can kind of see a little mauve when I kind of pile that up. You can see a little touch of that. But on me, I have neutral skin that leans a little cool. So this is gonna be a warmer tone. You can see a little bit more like rust in there and some brown, a little bit of clay. And so depending on what your skin tone is, it will kind of change the colors a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of comparisons here. So uh, these are all Lisa Eldridge shades. This is the shade Ribbon. And this, I'm looking specifically at lip, the lip pencils. I do have the lipstick, but you know, the lipsticks are going to look a little bit different than the lip pencils. It's going to give you a very close approximation of the color, but they will be slightly different. And in general, the Lisa Eldridge lip pencils are designed to be a little bit deeper than the lipsticks to give you that depth when you are layering them. So this is the shade Ribbon, and you can see the difference in tones. This is a bit more of a neutral red on top of that pink base, whereas this has more of that berry-like quality. And again, I think if you have a warmer skin tone, this might you might see a little bit more of that burgundy pop out. Uh, which on me, it's going to look a little bit more pink. And then this is Velvet Jazz, which is more of a burgundy red here. So you can see that um, Duchess is kind of in between Jazz and Ribbon. Now my closest shade here to Sorcery is Affair. And you can see how much softer Affair is, how there's a little bit more of that orange cinnamon kind of shade in there compared to sorcery, which when you see it next to something as warm as a fair, you can see a little bit more of that mauve there in sorcery than you could on its own. Now, just a little bit about the formula of the lip pencils. The Lisa Eldridge lip pencils, they do come in a box. They do not come with a sharpener and they are made in Germany. You have a two year shelf life. They're 1.2 grams. By the way, the eyeshadow palettes also have a two year shelf life. And I love the lip pencils because they're very creamy. They go on. And if you're piling this on, it can be creamy, like as creamy as a lipstick almost when you're putting it on. And then after a few minutes, it will set down and then it really stays put all day. So this is definitely a great alternative to wearing a matte lipstick. You can add like gloss. I added the Chanel lip gloss in Noche Moscata on top of Sorcery here just for a little like shine and uh, you know, emollients. And yeah, I have to say these, you know, if you wear these on their own in place of a matte lipstick, they are actually less drying on me than a typical matte lipstick. So I definitely have some great matte and velvet lipsticks that are not drying. But if you're looking at the average one on the market, to me, they're a bit drying on the lips. Whereas I find the lip pencils really are not, they're pretty neutral. So I think overall, I'm very happy with my purchases from Lisa Eldridge. I did want to give a shout out real quickly to her customer service. You know, there was some weird issue that I had originally when ordering 
and my entire area apparently was like blocked on their on their system for like Shopify. So, you know, they went through, they fixed the problem, I was able to order, and they actually comped me the Myth palette, you know, for my trouble. And I really appreciate that. I thought that was really nice. And as always, they have great customer service. So anytime you do have a problem with one of their products or an order, definitely reach out because they're always very welcoming. And as I've mentioned before in previous videos, if you have a lipstick that breaks, definitely let them know. And they have always been happy to replace those. For me, myself, I will have a video coming up soon with what I'm going to do with my broken um, you know, lipsticks, I'm actually gonna be making some lip palettes. So let me know if you're interested in seeing that, but I will definitely show you the finished product at least. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if you picked up any of these items or if you are interested in purchasing anything and let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please share and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.